this is Mike from Minimal 3DP and today I'm starting a video series on Cura and getting it set up and used. Let's go ahead and get started. I want to start off by saying that I've done another video series on Orca Slicer and before anybody asks which one is my favorite slicer, I really don't have a favorite. In my mind, none of these slicers are perfect. Best you can do is find a slicer that works well for you that you understand. Now predominantly I've used Orca Slicer, Cura, Rusa Slicer, so I plan on just extending my tutorials to include both Cura and Rusa Slicer. Right now I'm using Orca Slicer the most, although I'm growing frustrated with several of the settings. And I'm thinking about giving going back to Cura and giving that a shot, but again there is no best slicer, it's just which one works for you. So let's start taking a look Akira. I guess I need to apologize for any background noise. I am surrounded by two dogs and then a kitten is running around here somewhere. It turns out everybody likes to hang with me as I'm recording. So I, ha I have a studio audience today to get started. So talk about Cura. Cura is another open source project sponsored by Ultimaker. So Ultimaker is the company behind Cura, but Cura is open source and on GitHub and has a large community. If I was to switch over, you can see that again, here is Cura on GitHub looking at the code, you can see, hey, there are changes that occurred within the past couple of days. And so again, this is a very active project. And one of the things you can look at to tell it's popular and active is it does have 5,000 stars. I'm not sure what Work Slicer and Prusa Slicer have, but it's probably something similar. If I had to guess, Cura is more popular than either Prusa Slicer or Work Slicer. It's more widely used. I should also mention that Cura tends to be the base of of several other slicers. At least in the past, Cura was the base of Creality Slicer. Now I think that may be changing. They may be going to more of Orca Slicer, Bamboo Lab style, but in the past, Creality Slicer was heavily based on Cura. Anybody that I knew that was using the Creality Slicer, I always recommend they switch over to Cura. And one of the main reasons for that is Cura is being released regularly. Right now, there are 73 releases. The last release, which was 5.7.1, was released last week. It's a pretty rapid release cycle. We just look at these previous releases. We can look through here. And again, they're releasing, it looks like almost once a month. And that's good for the community. If we look through the release notes, there's lots of positive changes here, lots of great things happening, many bug fixes. And again, those improvements are something that's great for the community. Now to get started with Cura, let's take a look at that. Similar to Orca Slicer, you can go to the GitHub repository under releases. And right now, Cura is available for Linux, Mac, and Windows. I'm going to point out that with the Mac versions, it has the ARM chip, which is the Apple M1, M2, and M3 chips, and then also the Mac OS Intel chip. They have the 64-bit version for Windows. They have the MSI and the EXE. So you have some choices here. Now for some people, it's a little bit more nerve wracking to download directly from a GitHub repository and then install. For people that are a little nervous about that, which is understandable, you can just go to the Ultimaker website if you search for Cura and they have a download button here. So we can go and select the version we need. Now I'm going to install this on my Windows machine. So I'm going to select the Win64 EXE. So that's downloading. So we'll let that download and then we'll go through the install. So if I go up here, the download is completed. I can either do it right from my browser here or I can go to my downloads folder. Let's go via the download folders route. I'm just going to open up File Explorer, go to downloads. And right here is the Ultimaker Cura 5.7.1 EXE for Windows. Now, as you can see, I'm starting this tutorial in version 5.7.1. And I'm going to break this up so I'm just doing an install video, which should remain the same regardless of the version. Let's double click on this. And it's the same process for Windows and for Mac. I'm going to hit yes. And then just hit next on the prompts. And I agree, installing it in the default location. And I'm just going to hit install. And let's let this run and we'll come back. Now, once it's done installing, I'm going to hit 
finish here and I will run Cura. Let's give that a minute. There's the splash screen. And usually in the first run, it takes a minute or two. Now it should be noted, the more you have going on in Cura, the longer it's gonna to take to start, but it's never painful, at least I don't think so. So presented with the welcome screen. So let's just hit get started and we'll walk through this process. Again, there's some disclaimers, some information that's being sent back to Cura possibly. If you have an Ultimaker account, you can create that. Benefit of an Ultimaker account is it will back up your profiles and your material settings. Right now, I don't want to set one up. I do have one though, but I don't want to download all my backups. I just want to have a plain vanilla install right now. I'm going to hit skip. And the first big decision you have is which printer you're installing. Now, in my case, I don't have an Ultimaker printer. I'm, I have a non Ultimaker printer, so let's click that. Let's go down and it's not finding any network printers, which is not surprising. Let's go down to non-network printers, and I'm gonna set this up for one of my Creality machines. So let's scroll down and find Creality. And there's Creality 3D. And I'm just gonna scroll down, and let's do my Creality Ender 3 S1 Plus. I'm just gonna select that printer. I'll leave the name as is. I should point out that here's the name of the profile author, and basically the community is, contributed a lot of different profiles for Cura. So that's really a cool thing. So printers are added all the time. So let's hit next and it automatically generates the start code and end code, which you may need to change depending on your setup. It sets it up with defaulting to Marlin, which should be okay even if you're running Clipper. You have several other options here. We're just gonna leave this on Marlin. I'm gonna leave all the settings as is because tentatively they, those look all right. And hit next. And then there's some information about the latest version of Cura, that's okay. Keep hitting next. There's the release notes, and let's just hit finish. That's the install of Cura, so it was pretty simple. Let me make this big, and let's take a look around the interface. And we're going to make some changes that we'll take a deeper dive into in my next video. So to start off, we have, here's the printer we're using right over here on the left-hand side. Here's the material, and then here's the actual profile. One of the things I'm gonna do is Click on this drop down next to the profile and hit show custom. I'm gonna go a step further and hit the hamburger menu here and I'm gonna hit all because I like to show all of my different settings. I wanna see everything. And it's all organized really well. Quality, walls, top and bottom, infill, material, speed, travel, cooling, support, build plate adhesion, and then it goes down to dual extrusion, mesh fixes, and, and just special mode. Primarily what you're going to be using is from quality down to build plate adhesion. Those are the settings that you'll probably be doing most of your work in and most of your customization. Now I basically always customize my settings and I always leave it on all. I realize that could be a little overwhelming because there's a heck of a lot of settings, but that way you can see what everything's set to and I just find it better. So right now we have, have this initially set up. Let's go over and I'm just gonna drop a model in here that way we can see what that looks like. And I can show you again, slicing, how you slice. And then we'll call it a day. Give me one second. I'm just real quickly downloading a bench here. We'll download that, open up File Explorer, go to my downloads, and I'll just grab the bench and move it over. I can drag and drop in and so, Benchy's there, bottom right hand corner is the slice button place, and that's using the standard quality profile. It's up a little bit. You can see just out of the box, my Ender 3 S1 Plus is going to take an hour and 33 minutes, and this is with no tuning. I can then hit the save to disk, and this will save it. G code, which I can print. I could also hit preview and see what that looks like. And the preview is pretty good. If I hit the I button or hover over the I, I can see the different time estimates. And that's maybe one thing I, I don't like. It doesn't show that by default. I have to keep the mouse hovered over it. But I can sit here and see that most of the time is taken up by the outer wall at 25% of the time. And it looks like that's 22 minutes. Real helpful information. 
that's Cura in a nutshell. And that's just installing and getting that first profile going. In my next video, I'll show you how to create a profile from scratch and then go over the different profile settings. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks. Have a good Hi, day. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.